Good morning, John. Let's talk about The Hunger Games, a story about action and love and a really, really screwed up society. There's some easy things to relate to here. Most of us can relate to love. A lot of people enjoy a good action sequence, and yeah, we like to see the underdog rising up against the evil, oppressive regime. An unimaginably inequitable society in which people starve while other people gorge themselves so much that they have to though then go puke so that they can eat more. A world where a table is worth more than a human life. That's like the hardest thing to relate to out of the whole movie, except that it's not because we kind of live in that world. Susan Collins does an amazing job of this, of showing us basically a world that looks a lot like the world that we live in and having us look at it and say, how could anyone live in a world like that? She also does a really admirable job of not blaming the participants of that society. Like Katniss and Effie are friends. They love each other. Katniss is her friend despite the fact that Effie has always been and continues to be a participant in that culture of oppression. Why is that? Well, it's because because Effie isn't evil. There's one thing that exists in abundance in The Hunger Games, though, that does not exist so much in our world. As nice as it would be if this weren't true, and as impossible as it kind of is to believe, our deeply unequal society is not the result of a bunch of bad guys. We don't have a president, Snow. Or or we do have a President Snow, but he's not a person. The thing that causes inequality isn't some corrupt politician. It's not a bunch of psychopathic CEOs. Inequality is caused by human nature, psychology, sociology, and math. It's caused by math, and you can't fight math! It's math! Let's take an example. Two people. One of them is rich, one of them is middle class. They both want to invest in Netflix a year ago. The middle class person invests $10,000, the rich person invests a million dollars. Both of their money doubles in the next 12 months. That's a tremendous success for both of them, except that the rich person has a million new dollars and the middle class person has 10,000 new dollars. Inequality is also created by greed, yes. And it's created by societal structures, like rich people helping out rich people makes rich people much richer than poor people helping out poor people. And rich people hang out with rich people, and poor people hang out with poor people. That's a problem. It is not an easy problem to solve. I'd love to discuss all of the different cultural and psychological and sociological and mathematical reasons for inequality perpetuating itself, but I'm not making a documentary or film here. I just want to point out that inequality is not the result of animosity. It is just the result of the status quo. It's complacence that causes it, not evil. It's just the simplest path. Like, I probably spent enough money on, like, fancy dinners with my wife this year to save the lives of other people. But I didn't do that. I bought fancy dinners with my wife. Because that's what felt like the right thing to do. Like, that's just the normal thing to do. That's the status quo, the complacent, the path of least resistance. That makes me President Snow. I'm not evil, but I am complacent in that system. And just like Katniss doesn't hate Effie, I don't hate myself for that. But I do recognize that because inequality is the path of least resistance, we have to have structures to fight against it. Because inequality isn't just bad for poor people, it's bad for the economy, and it's bad for people's happiness. There is a very strong correlation between the equality of a society and the happiness of the people in that society, not just the happiness of the poor people either. The rich people are happier too. So we have to fight it. We have to recalibrate for equality. And we can do that in a lot of different ways. We can do that by helping people ourselves. We can also do it by making the government do it. You can also start on that path by signing up the Harry Potter Alliance's Odds in Our Favor campaign. A little bit of this. And it's also why you should be thinking about what you're gonna do for the Project for Awesome this year. And if you're curious about how to make a great Project for Awesome video, I've just made a video about that and uploaded it on the Project for Awesome YouTube channel, which you can go check out. You can learn how to make good videos promoting great charities. John, I'll see you on Tuesday. The Project for Awesome is in just 10 days, which means that you need to buckle down and figure out what that means